And what we want to do next is I want to look at correlated markets because I know um, there's a couple of reasons for this, right? So the past few days, it's looked like the S&P uh, might slow down and it could well slow down in the summertime. And if the S&P does slow down, there's a couple of techniques that you can use to actually stay with the indices, but, um, you know, not not sit with a really dull market. So um, a couple of years ago, for instance, if you haven't seen the summertime trade, a couple of years ago, we had one day where I think the range was uh, 3.25 points on the S&P. And I think that was the, the narrowest range we've had for like 15, 16 years. So in the summertime, it can get really slow. But what you'll find is that even if the, the S&P is really slow, within that, you know, if the S&P is in like a three or four tick range, you'll still have plenty of movement in the other indices to actually, you know, to actually make some bank. And you actually might find it's, um, it's quite a good opportunity. That's one way to trade this. The other way to trade it is to just get, get into um, to trading that, that, you know, trading the S&P for ticks. But obviously a lot of people, um, that, that's going to be tough. And, and for me, you know, it is a bit, it is a bit dull. So, so this year I'm trading, uh, as we go into summer, I'm going to be trading um, the NASDAQ down the Russell. So that's one reason, um, you know, one reason we're going to look at these correlated markets. The other reason is because there are some people going through this observation right now. And if you are going through that observation period and the market slows down, it's going to be really tough. But there are some opportunities in trading the correlations themselves. Okay, so first of all, if you look at these four markets, you can see I've got the Dow, the Russell, the NASDAQ. First thing you look at when you see all those four markets is it actually looks a bit of a mess and it actually looks like it's really unclear what's going on in any of them. So one of the things when we're looking at these correlated markets and the techniques I'm gonna talk about now, we're gonna talk about very short-term techniques we're going to talk about things where you'd be getting into and out of the NASDAQ for, you know, maybe 10, 20 ticks uh, and just going over and over and over then multiple times in a day, which is all obviously also ties in with what you're doing on your observation, your two weeks of observation, trying to pick something a little bit more higher frequency so that you've actually got more chances in a day to experience trades and to, you know, get into the markets and to, you know, have have some losers. I mean, if you've only got, uh, if, you, if your setup's only like three or four times a day on the, the ES, but you've got 20 an hour on the NASDAQ, um, you're obviously going to be able to refine those skills trading the NASDAQ a lot better. So anyway, so first thing is, it looks really unclear. So one of the things we, we're first going to do, we're going to clear all this, clear all the trades, and um, just let the market run for a minute. So with these correlated market techniques, we're trying to discover two things. We're trying to, um, first of all, just get into the market. So we, we want to watch the market for a few minutes just to get a feel of what it's doing, what kind of mode it's in. So the kind of modes that you're looking at, it's not like the uh, the market profile where you've got day types. This is, looking at the markets like this, the markets are going to change from one minute to the next, right? So the market might be... Um, in a, in a small range and just bouncing on each index from one at one end of the range to the other. Um, market might be in a, a slow move where, let's say for instance, you might have a seven or eight tick range on the S&P and it's going from one side of that seven or eight tick range to the other and, and that would be a slower move. You might find that the market's all just breaking down and are putting in a fast run. Or you might find the markets are, are heading towards a, towards a breakout, something like that. Right, so what you need to do first is, as you can see now, we've reset it all and recentered everything. I don't know if I recentered that one, okay. You can see um, that the markets are basically, you've got the S&P moving down, um, NASDAQ's just moving down a little, had a bit of a retrace. Uh, Russell is moving down and the Dow is moving down. So all the markets are moving down. But if you look at the S&P, we're not on a tear of any sort. So what I want to do is just let that develop and just see if we can start to tick up on the S&P and just see if we can mark out a range, right? So if the markets are gonna be in a range, you should find um, some kind of range marking out on all three of them and uh, and start to see signs that um, obviously these can move up. So so right now we've seen the, the Dow and the Russell 
have kind of been moving down. We haven't really seen any sign they've moved off. NASDAQ tends to be a bit more volatile, um, but we can see that obviously the NASDAQ is lagging behind. Now, if we thought that these markets are actually moving down, the NASDAQ's lagging behind, what we can do is we can put in a, a trailing order, trailing limit order. Now, one of the reasons, if you think the other markets are going down, one of the reasons you put in a trailing limit order on a market like the NASDAQ is because it does snap back a lot, right? And, you know, if you say, if, you, if you're thinking, well, the NASDAQ's getting left behind a bit, the other markets are moving down, um, you know, so I can put a trail on the NASDAQ. Now, how much wriggle room does that give you? Instead of getting in on a, a market order, sell market order on the NASDAQ, um, to get in on a, a trail, you're effectively giving yourself um, 10 ticks of a, 10 ticks back, getting them, allowing the market to, to move 10 ticks back, and then plus whatever your stop is. So it kind of just, just kind of forces you to get in a better price. Now, if you do something like this, what you need to be doing as well is just watching other markets. And if this, the other markets start to, to lift up uh, and stop moving down, then you can take your foot off the gas. And the other thing, if the markets start to really tear down and start to spike down, which they're actually starting to do now, again, you might want to cancel the trade. But let's just say you stay in the trade, okay? Once you're in the trade, we can just, uh, just kind of recenter everything. What you want to watch is this, okay? You want to watch to see what the balance of trade is, right? So you can see now we started off, we've kind of got a little bit, um, we were a little bit on the blue side. We kind of balanced out a little bit now. But we want to basically see if these markets start to lift, if the other markets start to lift, we want to get out of a trade, okay? If we now we can see we're mostly red, we can see the market's pushing down, but we're not care, we don't really care about um, you know price levels. We don't care about any particular price level. All we're trying to do is watch are the other markets ticking up. So you can see the Dow started to tick back up. You can see the S and P started to tick back up there when we took that trade. Okay, so you're just trying to get in on short term patterns. Now I know that some of you are trying to do this um, on the drills. And all you've got to do is, if you're drilling this, just drill over and over and over again, right? So now let's just uh, let's just watch. We've, so we've, we hit some lows. We started to go down, and we're pulling back. Now what we need to do is, if we start to see maybe the market's lifting up, we can see the market's lifting up. We can see the Russell get slightly behind there. Sorry, it's just. So if we see one market get left behind again, we can go long that market. But then if the others start to move down, we can say right, the others are uh, moving down. Um, we can just get out of that trade. Okay, so let's just go over that again. So our markets are all pushing down. We've got a choice, what can we do? If we think it's on a tear down, we can just get in. If we think the market stopped, we can go long. So let's just uh, give this a second. Okay, so we're on a move push down again. We are making some new lows there. Okay, we look like we stopped. So let's just say we think we've bottomed here. Okay, what we're gonna do, if we think we've bottomed here, we can just wait for one of the other, wait for a couple of the markets to actually start moving up, and then just take going on the one that's left behind. Let's just let that run a bit. Okay, you see the S&P moving up now? Okay, we don't have one left behind yet. Okay, it's so pushing back down. Okay, so let's say we think it's gonna tear down. Okay, now the reason we're doing this, we're just trying to, okay, so we can see we got an order, but the, the Russell's starting to pop up, so we'll cancel that. Still want to get in the downside, but we don't want to, um, we don't want to go in at the market. We want the market to pull back. If the market's not tearing down, we want it to pull back a little bit, sorry. We want it to pull back a little bit. Okay, so we've got these moving up, so it looks like we might be in a range now, a short-term range. Okay, so if we can see a sign that the, the market's starting to move down. So this is what I mean, when, when you guys are trying to drill this um, and try and do the cut and reverse, you've just got to wait, um, you've just got to try and wait for something to happen when one market gets left behind, okay? We can see the NASDAQ's pushing down. So for instance, with this NASDAQ pushing down now, if these other markets broke up, that would leave the NASDAQ temporarily below value. So let's just... Uh, Give it a minute. Okay, now you see the Russell's slightly left behind.
be nice now if we could get a little bit more of a push down on the other markets and the Russell not to move. Okay, didn't get it. Yeah, you see we're kind of stuck in the middle now. Okay, so we want it to get, so we either want it to run or we want to get an extreme. Now the idea is to get used to just getting into trades and cutting, getting into trades and cutting and getting into trades and cutting. Because if you are trying to get, now let's just say for example, we see the, the Russell getting left behind. Okay, let's get in. Right, if we start to see blue on here, a lot of blue, or if we start to see these other markets come back, we just want to flatten it. Right, we're expecting downward momentum. It's not about what happens in our market, right? Okay, it's got the, see that, that Nasdaq's pushing up? So what we want to try and, try and do is get used to watching a few things. Okay, get used to watching the meters and get used to watching the other markets, right? So you can see the Nasdaq's pushing up now. Okay, so let's just say, okay, so let's just say, okay, we think the market's got upside. All we want to do is try and get swept into a trade and cancel it if we think everything starts going down. Or if we get into the trade, scratch it if everything starts going down, right? So we don't have to be right all the time. We're trying to be, we're trying to get some wiggle in the trade by trailing behind price. And then we're trying to look at the other markets. Okay, so just watch the meters for a start. If we get a lot of red in here, what happens? So you've got all the blue. Okay, and he just took out the trailing stop. Okay, so very, very quick trade. So, so that's what scalping, that's what scalps are about. Okay, so what we want to do, a couple of, couple of techniques, right? First of all, wait for one market to get left behind. Second of all, look for a run. Right? If the market's running really fast, you can just hit it. Um, if the market's kind of um, running at a moderate pace and they're all going up, my opinion, you're better off trailing behind it. Right? But you've just got to wait for the break. If we look at the market now, you can look at the ES. It's really not doing anything. It's in this like uh, six tick range. Okay, so let's just see if we can get to an extreme. Okay, see what it does down at, this, down at the bottom here. Okay, we missed that. Right, so I'm down at the bottom here, but I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm moving up on the, the Russell, kind of close to the bottom on the, the NASDAQ. So at the mo if you think about it, if, you're, if the NASDAQ's going down, or is at the bottom, and it's not going down, and, and the others are kind of uh, moving up, you've just got that temporary, just a very small temporary edge. Okay, now everything's getting down. Looks like it's tearing down. Now you want to wait for it to, we'd want to wait, before you take a, a, a short into there, I'd want to wait for the, the S&P to break first. Okay, you can see the market is starting to bounce. So you can say, so, so here's a good example. We think the markets are starting to bounce. You think the markets are going up. Very simply, what you can do now, you can trail it. And if the other markets start to go down, you can cancel that trail, right? Okay, let's get rid of my finger on the flat button. Okay, see the market's still going up. Okay, now with that kind of momentum, I wouldn't want to go. Uh, wouldn't want to go long into that. But we can see on the S and P, we're kind of at the top of the range. So we could have actually, if we weren't uh, focused on uh, a long trail there, we could have taken a short at the top. So let's just wait for it to go to the bottom. Okay, so we can see the S and P now going to the bottom. Uh, these are the these are just the the strength meters you asked. These are just the trade strength meters. Okay, so we're in the middle of the range now. Not a great time to trade. But can, can you actually see the ranges marking out? Can you actually see, quite simply see the ranges on there? Right, can any of you see that? Alex, you're asking if it's better if it's to watch multiple. The, the thing about, if you only watch one dome, uh, first of all, the, the reason you've got multiple domes are up there is because you, they're all the same market, effectively. They're all the US indices, right? So they're all gonna pretty much move in step. Um, Sometimes one's going to lead the moves, um, and you'll be able to take advantage of that. 
But if they're all kind of doing the same thing and moving in step, it kind of means you've got a nice um, healthy market. Um, if you're only watching the ES right now, um, I don't know, to me, if you're only watching one market, you haven't got really an idea of um, if the ES is getting left behind. Okay, so you can see them all moving up. Russell's, Russell's really hasn't got the range today. Okay, you could say, for instance, the Dow isn't at the highs yet. So the Dow's not at its highs yet. Okay, let's just take a... See, that, that market's pulled back. Okay, so we just hit into that. So we can just take a long, say we think it's pulled back. And then just watch the meters. Okay, stop that. <laughs> and right. Okay, start again. Okay, so what's the market doing? What's the S&P doing? S&P's tearing up a little bit. Okay, so let's try and trail the NASDAQ again. And again, what we're trying to do is if the others start going down, is stop trailing it. I don't want it's got four on there. Okay, so now the market's starting to come back a bit. I think this, I mean, today it looks like, it looks like uh, 10 ticks is a bit bit much to be trailing behind the NASDAQ in a move up. You can see we, we're coming back and not really tagging it. Um, and again, that's fine. We could just, uh, you know, we could just change the strategy and, and um, okay, so there we are. And again, what are we seeing? Reds on the meters. We see the other markets moving up. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's you. So it's almost um, it's almost like a video game, right? And um, it's so it's basically just going over and over and over again, um, just waiting for that, um, just waiting to get in the rhythm of the markets, um, and but just getting to the rhythm of four. But you're not, re it's not, you're not looking at the bids and offers, right? You're not looking at the bids and offers at all, right? You're not really looking that much at the tr at the size trading. Um, you're just looking to try and get a, I mean, this, these columns do help because they kind of mark out the range or they mark out where it's been. So that does help. But you're really not interested in a price level. You're not interested in where the market's going to turn around today. You're just trying to get in tune to, to what they do. Now, they're slowing down. Is the market on a tear? You know, if you like seeing, you know, we've, we've done a lot of trails today on the NASDAQ where obviously 10 ticks has been, a bit too big uh, to trail behind because it's obviously, um, you know, obviously, it's obviously, it's obviously, you know, coming back five or six ticks. Um, the clear trades timer interval. Um, the clear. Okay, so let me just do something again. If I just get into a, um, let's just get into it along there. Okay, so the trades here are not clearing on a timer. They're clearing when I get into a position. All right. If I just show you the the setting. Right. So if you look at the setting, I'll do it again in a second. Um, you can see the power meters. There's there's two settings here. There's uh, clear current trades on new position. And then there's reset on clear current trades. So if you have those two set, um, okay, let's just try and sweep into a short now. We can see the markets are going down. Um, we can see, we know that 10 ticks. I don't want to change, I'm too lazy to change the strategy to be honest. Um, we can see they're, they're pulling back a bit. The S&P is still at the lows. Uh, the Dow and the Russell pulled back a bit there. You can see I'm, I'm really, 10, 10 is really too, too far for the trail on NASDAQ today. Um, okay, so now we had the 10 tick trail. Now we've got 10 ticks of, another 10 ticks of leeway, right? So we, now we can see everything popping back up. So you saw there, you see, there, this is just the trade since we got in. So we can see we're in the blue a little bit. And we can see the other markets are um, wiggling about. So really, this is a trade. This is a, this is a time to, for me, because of what's happening on the S&P, you see there's a lot of trade there. If that breaks, that's time to cut the trade. Okay. But again, what you need to do, you need to observe this, figure out what the... Um, what the particular style you want to do. So if you want to, if you want to uh, just uh, hit in when the market runs um, with a decent stop, trade that style. Figure out how many times uh, when you're watching it does the market run, 
And it's going to be a few because you can see the range on the S&P, but you can see the kind of volatility that's coming in and out of the other markets, right? You can actually, you can, you can see that. It's, 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 it's very often. So they're slowing down, like when the, when the, the S&P is in the middle of the range, uh, they're marking at ranges, then they're breaking out of those ranges. But really, overall, we're not actually going anywhere, right? Uh, would you ever use a market order? Absolutely. If the market's at, so let's just, um, somebody said you ever use a market order. Let's just try and get the market running. When the market starts to really run, let's just see if we can get a run. When the market starts to really run, absolutely getting on a market order. So I know prop firms are getting on market orders. Um, and with a market like the NASDAQ, when you're trying to get in on a runner, I mean, if we try and get in on a, you know, you know, sometimes you try and get in a limit order and you'll, you know, the, the market's already moved by the time you've clicked it. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But I would say if you're trying to get a pullback, I think you're better off on a trail, trailing order because it's really difficult. Um, I mean, it's certainly better than trying to use a limit order on a pullback. Um, you can wait for a, so you see now that's slowed down a bit. You could certainly see if you can get that. Trying to mark it. See where it's slowed down a little bit? Oh, too late. See how too late. But you see when it came down, the way all everything slowed down. And we could try again there. But basically what happened there, we came down to about 71.30 and everything had slowed down a little bit. And that's an opportunity to just get on a pullback. And then if it starts to come back at you, um, just, just, just click flat to get out. Now, the other thing is these markets are going to give you opportunities to get out um, at flat when it comes back. So the other thing is you, you don't want to be scared to, um, or you don't want to be in the situation. So let's try and get into a, um, a trade against us. Okay, let's just get out of that. So let's just do on a, a blue. Right, so this should, this. Okay, okay, that was a bit too fast. That didn't go. So I wanted to trade that was going to go against us, but uh, not that much. Let's just try a, um, try a sell now. Right, so. The, okay, I wanted I wanted to go against us. What happens a lot of the time, basically, is it will go against you and then it will come back to your entry price, right? And there's a real temptation to stay in when it comes back to your entry price, but really, it's not. That's not the best idea sometimes, because uh, a lot of the times, obviously, it's coming back to your entry price. It's just it's just wiggling around and giving you a chance to get in, right? So okay, we just 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 have a look at one more more thing. We've got markets at uh, highs we haven't been to for a while. Um, so for the people that are watching, I, can you see from this, so two questions, can you see from this the different kind of speeds that the, the market's changing pace all the time? You can see that, right? Okay. We got one person that can see that. Thank you, Mike. So the first thing you got to do is, is actually see, if you can just see that, that's kind of the first thing you're gonna, first thing you're observing is just the market switching gear. So you saw that at the highs there. You might you might decide every time you see the markets pause like that that you're gonna that you're gonna uh, get in get in short. So you can see that they all they all they all moved up to the highs and then they just they just paused a minute. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing. So if you just get you get tuned up for that, you could say right when the market's running, I'm not gonna bother. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do this thing where you know they they're all they're all they all move up and they all just seem to to pause, and then uh, and that's something I can see right. How many times do I see that? Okay, what typically happens when when that occurs, right? So we can see it's coming down. So now we're in the middle. We don't really have um, you know much opportunity unless uh, for me, for my opinion, if, if if the Nasdaq, if you want to trade the Nasdaq and the Nasdaq's in the middle, um, you really need the other markets to pop up first. I mean, we get we get in the Nasdaq popping first. At the moment, so if we want like a pullback trade, for instance, um, let's just do it again, just do the trail. So again, you can put an order in, and the idea would be is to cancel the order if everything starts to pull back, right? So as long as everything else is bullish, you can leave that order in, right? Now again, I said it does appear that Tentix is a little bit, um, a little bit generous for the pullback, but anyway, that's fine. Okay, so everything's still up. Everything's still up. Now, if you go on a real, if you get on a real tear up, you don't want to keep trailing. You don't want to trail forever. But, um, but this this would this would be okay. So we can just say right, as long as everything else looks looks bullish, um, let's just trail after that market. Okay, let's stop in a little bit.
Okay, so, so right now everything still looks bullish, right? Everything's at the highs. Um, if we start to see everything um, start to, to come down, we can just cancel the order and just wait for the next one. And, and there'll be that many opportunities that if you can just refine it and keep the best ones, um, then, you know, that's a, it's a, a nice, nice little summertime, nice little summertime trade. And that's how you can kind of start to develop and feel these edges. You're starting to see these markets moving. You're starting to see, you know, well, I keep seeing the, you know, the, when they're down, the, the Russell are at their highs and the, the Nasdaq's pulling back 10 ticks and everything's staying at the highs. It, it seems to work. But then when the, the Dow comes down, it seems to, it seems to wash me out. And just try and get into that mode. Come on. You see, now, now we get into the point where really everything's going to start pulling back. And we really, we really don't want to get into the trade on the, on the NASDAQ if everything starts to pull back. We really want to, to just be in a kind of taking advantage of the, the extra volatility in the NASDAQ compared to the other instruments. Because right now you can see the range, the range we've got on the NASDAQ is much bigger than we've got on all the other things. So, you know, as long as, you know, we, we can have the other things at the high and the markets overall aren't really pulling back. Right, the markets overall aren't really pulling back; they're just trading at the highs. But just the Nasdaq's got that extra wiggle that's letting us get in at a better price, so we have a little bit more breathing room. Now, if you look at the, all the red there, that's not a good sign. But we've, everything's gone back to the highs. But if you don't get a pop soon, it's a it's a cancel. Okay, see you see everything, see see everything. The, the other start to pull back. See that the 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 Dow start to pull back, the Russell start to pull back. So that was a scratch. Okay, so does that does that do, are you? The, the white line in the middle, just answer the question. Um, white line is the middle is just the center line, right? And you just, um, well, you just reset it by clicking the center button. A couple of questions here. Uh, hidden liquidity on the S&P bid. Yeah, you can look for stuff like that as well. Um, the speed is very daunting, David. But again, remember that um, it's the first time you've looked at this. And, um, you know, probably the first time you crossed the road, that might have been daunting as well. So I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And if you see, think the speed's a bit daunting, then focus on trading the Russell, where it's, it's really not as fast. Um, or even just stick with the, you know, just, just use the S&P, wait for the S&P to lag. You can wait for the S&P to lag. But the theory is that over the next couple of months, this is going to slow down a lot, right? So this is not going to stay this fast. You know, if we, I mean, we look really, the S&P, the S&P's actually moved up a fair amount, actually, since we've been here. Um, but I would agree, the speed is daunting, absolutely. Um, if the markets decorrelate, well, you will expect them to decorrelate um, day to day. Uh, they can decorrelate hour to hour. So, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, you can have days where the Russell and the Dow uh, go at the opposite end. And then you just, it's just different strategies at that point. So if the Dow and the Russell are going in the opposite direction, you'll find, generally speaking, the um, well, certainly the Dow and the Nasdaq in opposite directions, that the S&P will be sideways. Um, so again, you've got a choice. You can say, well, that, my trade's not on. Now, because they're not correlated, my trade's not on. Or, or I've got a different trade, right? Um, and yeah, and yeah, the speed, you know, I, I, when I, you know, if you'd have asked me like five years ago, I was not a big fan of markets like crude and fast markets. But I've seen so many people succeed with them and do really well with them. And, um, you know, I, I gave them a second chance myself um, to actually, you know, go back and, and look at them. But, you know, we all know it's going to slow down um, over the next few months. Yes, this will be recorded. OK, so what are we doing now? We can see we've got a range marked out on the S&P. And the good thing is we're not even looking at charts here. We, can you see the range on the S&P without the chart? Can you see... Just that short-term range. Yeah, yeah. So when you first looked at this, okay. So just go back, just go back then to when I first opened this screen, right, 30 minutes ago. Is it any clearer now than when I first opened it? Okay, okay. Because it's kind of hard to explain. Okay, that's good. It's a bit hard to explain it on the run, right? But basically, you know, you come in and it's all over the place. And the first thing you do, OK, let's just reset it all. Let's just get it all back to normal and just let it play out. And just, just sit back, let it play out. And uh, what are they doing? And you just want, and it's not that much to watch. Some people, you know, when, when you think about reading uh, four or five domes, you think about, I'm going to read all the depth 
I've got to read all the prices. I've got to read this, I've got to read that. We haven't even used the price, right? So in all, in all of the stuff we've done today, we could have had the price column off, right? There's been, there's absolutely no benefit to the price column in what we've been doing. All we've been doing is watching stuff um, move up and down. Okay, so let me just go over the settings again. Okay, there's two settings you need. You need the power settings reset on clear current trades and um, and reset on new position. Okay, that, that should do both actually. And then we've got uh, clear current trades on new position. Now you can recenter um, or not, it's up to you. There's, there's pros and cons of recentering. So let's just um, let the market move a bit. So we can recenter. If you watch the NASDAQ now, if I put in a trade on the NASDAQ, okay. And just watch it recenter. Give me a second. Just waiting for things to see if we can pop to the upside a little bit. See, it's slowed down now. You can see it's slowed down. You got, but but we're back in the middle anyway. Let's. I, I can't show you the recenter if we're in the middle. <laughs> I need it to come down. Uh, let's just look at the Russell. Let's just watch the Russell recenter, right? So 1664.5, uh, we want to get in. And, oh, there's a spread there. Right, so what the recenter does, it will actually recenter that dome when you get into trade. Now, what we can do as well, if I just, uh, we just get out of that. Um, we can actually have a setting to... Uh, Recenter all windows when there's a new position. Now you might not like so watch where the the Dow, the Russell, the Nasdaq, the S and P is. If I go into a trade on the S and there, so what it's done now, I went to trade on the Russell. They all recentered, which is okay, but you kind of lose track a little bit of where, you know, where they were in relation to each other. So let's just show you without that. Let's just show you without that. Okay, so let's just uh, get that. So this is the way I like it. I like it with recenter, but not all windows. So what it's going to do now, what I'll do is I'll do the same thing again. Let the let them move a little bit first. So I can see that the Dow, well, the Dow's kind of at center. Nasdaq's below center. S and P's uh, at center. Um, I want to move away a bit first. Let's just move away from center a little bit first. Okay, let's just get it. so. Well, I can see now my Russell recentered, but my Nasdaq still below center. So I've still got the center line to kind of as a reference point because I know, um, you know, I know that the Nasdaq was below center when I got into the trade, and it's still below center to me. If I recenter all of them, I kind of lose I lose the track of, of where they all were and whether one's moved. What I do though is I do I do um, clear all the trades. Okay, so let's just look at that. Um, appearance trading um, clear current trades on new position all windows now again you may or may not like that but let's just kind of um, let's just get out of that okay let's just flatten that okay so the other one look at the current trades numbers here here and here so what I can do is I can get onto trade in NASDAQ okay now what we saw I believe did all the were they, did they all clear there let's just have a look um, clear current trade. Yeah, let's just do that again. Let's just do that again. Flatten that again. Okay. So watch the current trades. Okay. They all they all like, they all blanked out. And and I like to do that because I like to see what traded just since I got in. Um, if you're using the meters, it's not that important actually. So you can see the meters mostly blue, but it's, it's kind of nice. You know that the S and P is trading more on the uh, the offer side. Again, you can see the, the Nasdaq's more on the offer side. You can see the, the Dow's more on the offer side. The, the Russell is like completely refusing to move, but everything else is kind of more on the, the offer side. Um, and that would be like, that's a nice thing to see. And if you have it all cleared from the start, you can kind of like just, it's really easy to eyeball. So I'm, again, I'm not looking at the price. I'm not looking at the bids and offers. I'm not looking at the, um, you know, uh, I'm not looking at anything else. I'm just seeing, you know, just got an eye on what's trading. And in this case, you know, I could see that I was bullish. Now the Nasdaq's starting to come down. I'd probably just say, you know, if I was, if I wanted to be long, I'd probably try and work an exit on that one. 
Okay, I don't need to work in accident though, it's a sim account. <laughs> right, okay. So is there any questions about this? Okay, so let me just, um, okay. Um, to be honest, yeah, you could start with one, Dom. To be honest, I think you should jump in with as many as you um, as you can. But, you know, maybe one way to do it, one way to do this would be to do uh, this. And just, um, it's just difficult to make. And maybe even get rid of the volume profile. Uh, get rid of the, because you don't need the volume profile, to be honest. You get rid of the price. Um, and just watch them going up and down. So, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, maybe you don't need necessarily the Russell. To be honest, you could just do the down the Nasdaq and the S and P, but as the Russell's on the CME, I think you might as well. Um, we've all got the data now, um, so use a buy sell buy sell trailing stop order to get into the trade. Okay, it depends on the trade. If the market, okay, so if the if the so you, the first thing you're doing is is you you clear everything down. You try and get into what the market's doing. If it's in ranges, if it, like if if the S and P is in a four or five tick range, um, what you want to do is you want to look for, um, you know, you can see the range now since I since I got into the trade. You want to look for the Nasdaq or or the Dow or the Russell to hit the to get to the bottom of that range, and you want to see markets lifting. If you see markets lifting, um, then you can kind of try and get into that trade and stay with it. Okay. If you're seeing the market in a bit of a run, so let's just say now we think the, the markets are running down a bit, then we can trail behind, right? And the, and the reason to trail behind is you're just trying to let the wiggle get you in instead of just going in at market for a smaller stop. Um, and that's if the market's in a moderate move down. Now, once the markets start to really tear down, once the markets start to aggressively move down, it's really dangerous to, I don't think the trail's a good idea anymore you're much better in a market order because the chance of that market snapping back, um, once the market's in a real tear, the, the, the move back's gonna be fairly violent as well. So this isn't a very violent market at the moment. If the market's going violently down and you trail behind it, um, the chances are that, that you're trailing into a violent move up. So I would say you've just got, you've got to make sure if it's really fast, then it's not a good trade, okay? Then once you're in the trade, you gotta say, well, what's going on now? What's going on now? Um, you know, everything's red, but again, there's hardly anything traded. Not much is trading. We've got a bit more time. Okay, I don't know what I've got. Oh, I've got filled on eight. Um, and, and this is probably, this is more like you're going to see it in the summertime. This is more like you're going to see it in the summertime, right? That, that That's the kind of pace you're going to see. But basically, as long as you can see um, <clears throat> it's trading your side, uh, then you can stay with the trade. Okay. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's momentum scalping, absolutely. Um, so trading at the end of the range is absolutely fine. Just make sure the, that the market's in that mode, right? Just make, as long as the market's in that mode, you're absolutely fine. Um, I've never tried this on treasuries. The, the concepts work on treasuries. The concepts of watching the markets and looking for a lagger is absolutely working on treasuries. You're much better off talking to John Grady than talking to me there. Um, the stop loss auto adjusting... Uh, it doesn't auto just a breakout. It's just a, a regular trailing stop. Um, so, so no. Um, uh, sorry, the, you, somebody's asking if the stop loss are just a break even. No, it doesn't just a, a just a break even. Um, so, any more questions on that? Does does that make sense? I mean, it's like I say, it's a bit like playing a video game. You know, you got no, you don't, you don't care which market is. You don't care what the price is. You just care how they're moving together, right? And again, as the markets slow down in the summertime, instructions on how you set up an ATM strategy. I could probably tell you in two seconds. Um, right, so as we move into the summertime, um, this is really worth a go because it's, um, it's going to be, uh, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of slowdown in the S&P, most likely, although saying that last year, we didn't um, see much slowdown. Um, right, so if you just want to go look at the strategies, fair question. Uh, strategy button is here. <clears throat> this is the quantity. So this is the first four, the next two, the next two. Asterisk means everything else. Um, it's a 10 tick stop on this one. And it's a trailing stop. So it's a 10 tick trail as well. And it's a 4, 8, 12, 16 target. And they're OCO orders. So that's basically how you set it up. Oh yeah, man, if you start to do this, don't start with a live account. Um, you really want to start to get into it. And this is going to, it's like playing a video game, right? It's a couple of hours a day, a couple of hours a day. First time you do it, you're going to sweat a lot. If you've ever done a flight simulator, 
Um, like, I did a flight simulator and I was, I've never been so clammy. It's, it's, it's going to be like, like that. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. But if you just do an hour or two hours a day and then just keep doing it, you're just going to see the patterns in the market. And, and this is just building that pattern recognition skill. Okay, there is a recording. And um, okay, so if we, there's, there's no more questions. We can finish there. I mean, I can still, I can keep clicking in and out of trades if you want. Um, but we'll finish there if there's no more questions. So, uh, oh, thank you. Some nice comments there. And, uh, and we can do this again, you know, we can do this again, especially when the, you know, when the market slows down a bit um, in, the, in the summer, um, we, we should do it again uh, with the slow market. But obviously, if some of you guys try this, uh, if you struggle with it, we can do another session. And if you try it, just let me know the results and just I'd be really interested also to see how long it takes you uh, to become proficient at it. Um, okay, we'll do we'll do a few more. We'll do a few more. It's easy enough to do. It doesn't take a lot of prep. All right. Well, thank you guys for turning up, guys and girls. And um, I will I will catch you in the next session.